Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the Baofeng UV-16. It's the Baofeng radio that's not really a Baofeng, but it actually is a Baofeng. I'll clarify all that. We'll talk about the advertised specifications versus the actual specifications. And uh, you know, some really unique things about this radio and get an overall opinion. Is this radio still a good deal with the actual specifications themselves? And then we'll go ahead and conclude with an overall observation and opinion about this radio altogether. Let's get started right now on Ham Radio Dude. The Baofeng UV16 OE is an interesting radio and kind of difficult at points to find accurate information on it because it's not an actual Baofeng product. If you go to Baofeng's website, you won't find this listed anywhere because it really doesn't exist. And when you do venture off onto sites like ebay.com or li express you find this radio listed with many different features the radio i purchased was advertised as three to five watts with a 5800 milliamp hour battery rating and it looked mighty similar to the ub5r in fact dual band dual display with 128 channels but there were a few differences that i felt like i had to purchase this radio to see the first thing I noticed on this radio was the IP68 rating, and if you're not familiar, IP67 rating is submersible into water at 1 meter in depth for up to 30 minutes. IP68 is said to be a little bit better, and usually specified by the manufacturer. However, going through the eBay listing or reading the very generic user manual, there's no more indications of any kind of IP rating at all on this radio. I will give indicators that make me believe that this is some sort of IP rated radio. And that includes the little screw on the back of the battery on the bottom here, as well as a rubber seal around the battery. So when you click the radio into place and you screw this little screw in, it really helps make a seal in between the radio and the battery. The side covers for this radio for the push to talk, the squelch, the speaker, microphone, and USB-C charging are actually pretty nice. In fact, they kind of are rubber that have a block shape to them internally, so it helps to seal that area. The one thing I will say though is they're using a Kenwood style programming cable, which would, if water got in, be more susceptible to damage than like a Motorola style plug on the side of the radio. And the UV16 has a different antenna. Now, when I originally got this different antenna, I was thinking that it might have something to do with the waterproof rating. And as I continue to screw this on here, it does actually appear to provide a good seal. But the problem there is this, this never really ties down and that popped right off. So it's a very inexpensive and cheap antenna. And if we take a look on here, we can kind of see what they're doing with the coil and the capacitor. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down and I'll glue that back into place a little bit later. Using two screws, you could attach the belt clip to the back of the battery on this radio. I prefer my belt clips to be on the radio, but I understand that this is fairly subjective. And the reason I prefer that is so if I'm ever having to swap out batteries, I don't have to interchange the belt clip or purchase additional belt clips. When I turn on the radio, I'm greeted by my favorite Baofeng spokesperson. Frequency mode. And it sounds identical to a UV5R as well as the LCD is about the same. One of the things that we do notice different though is we have our VFO memory, our A band, B band, and our FM buttons kind of in the middle of the radio. And additionally, if we take a look here, we'll notice that the buttons have this little raised edges to them, a little bit different than other models of Baofeng radios. I then go through the menu system and it appears to be the same as most any Baofeng radio out there, so we're not gonna go too far into that. I do though shut down the radio, hold down the three button and turn the radio on. And it says UV16V01, which is the version of this radio or the firmware that might be on it. And uh, I don't see any reference to that anywhere online. I do then start to work on receiving and transmitting and this is where it gets very interesting. And some of my suspicions are now confirmed as I go into the memory option initially on the radio, 
I discovered that the radio is programmed for GMRS, which gets my gears grinding, and I noticed that this radio is capable of transmitting all of 136 through 174 megahertz and all of that 70 centimeter range as well as GMRS. And I don't condone using these radios on illegal frequencies, but they're open to transmit. And I did test uh, 220 or the 1.25 meter band, and these do not transmit on there. And I don't want to use this for GMRS or anything else, so I'm going to program this radio. Now, I could program this manually through the front keypad, or I could use Chirp. If you scroll through Chirp, you're going to notice there's no UV16 listed. Instead, you need to select the option for the BF-F8HP, which is Baofeng's high-power 8-watt radio. I wonder how much this radio could actually do. On two meters, the radio was showing two and a half watts on low power, and on high power, it was showing around 5.5 watts. And if we go over to 70 centimeters, it was around two watts on low power, and up to about 5.1 watts on high power, which is pretty cool. And I did a little research on the F8HP radio from Baofeng, and it appears that that radio has three different power levels, low, medium, and high. Whereas this one only has two, which I found kind of interesting, but might be something to do with the firmware. Anyway, it seems that it's fully supported in Chirp, and I loaded this up with all of my local repeaters. And now I want to get an idea how far I'm able to hear people with this. And I enjoy using NOAA Weather Radio as kind of a gauge to see how far I'll be able to at least listen to repeaters. This NOAA Weather Radio station now is in Chicago, about 50 to 55 miles away from my house as the crow flies. <laughs> And that doesn't necessarily sound super great, but we do have to keep in mind that I'm indoors in an urban environment, and uh, that's 55 miles. And we'll compare it to the original Baofeng antenna. Island, Illinois, and northerly island to Calumet Harbor, Illinois. You can call me crazy, but I think that the original Baofeng antenna does sound better. And I have spoke about this in the past, but both your receive and your transmit quality is going to be affected by a few things to include how high in the air your antenna is. I've been on mountaintops where I've made 90 mile contacts with 5 watts of power on VHF. I start to conclude my test by testing the battery. Remember, it was advertised as 5800 milliamp hours. And using this continual load tester here, over a series of three different tests, I found that the battery is about 1,280 milliamp hours. That's a far, far cry from 5,800 milliamp hours. And during those tests, I had to recharge the battery. So I did a combination of charging from the USB-C as well as charging from the actual cradle that plugs into the wall. The cradle was pretty interesting. If the battery was done charging and I took the radio out of the cradle, and then later went to put the battery or radio back into the cradle, it wouldn't charge until I unplugged the cradle from the power source and plugged it back into the outlet. Pretty interesting. And then the USB-C. And with the USB-C plugged into the radio for charging purposes, there's no real indicator that the battery is charging except for a very dim red light on top of the radio. Even with the radio on and the LCD showing the battery symbol, it still doesn't show charging but it does actually charge. I paid uh, $33 for this radio, so just a little bit over the price of a UV5R, and that's why I kind of keep referring to the UV5R. Uh, but where do we stand? On paper, this radio looks like a, a great deal. IP68 rating, 5,800 milliamp hours, uh, upgraded antenna. And as we continue to look at these things, those claims are false, but, but... And I think it's a matter of what you want to do. For example, I recently got that Jackery power box and it does charge USB. So I'd like that opportunity to not have to carry a cradle. USB charging is a big seller for me and I would gladly pay the eight extra dollars from a Baofeng UV5R. But furthermore, even if we didn't have USB-C charging, there is some kind of water protection on this radio. I'm not saying it's IP67 or 68, and I don't know that I want to test this, uh, at least not yet. Uh, we all know that I'm going to submerge this radio in water uh, eventually. 
It only took nine days for this radio to be sent from China and received here in the US, which I don't think is that long of a wait. I will say that the seller has changed his description since I purchased this item originally. Originally, the radio was advertised as 15 watts, and I could have sworn it was advertised as a UB16 Pro, which was the reason I bought it all along. However, I am content and happy that the seller is becoming more honest with the power output rating, as well as what model this might be, <laughs> even though, again, we know this isn't a real Palafang radio. It's very important for you to know that if this is your first radio or a backup radio for hit the fan scenario, you need to know what you're getting. And that's the problem as a lot of times we see outrageous claims from all these different sellers for a radio that doesn't really exist. And my goal here today was to give you that opportunity to see what this radio is actually doing because really for $33, not a bad radio, but when you start to see that for $50 or $60, or you start to see the numbers getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're charging you more, they're ripping you off. It's very important that you do your research, watch videos online to see what other people are saying about those radios. And I would recommend when in doubt, stick with actual Baofeng radios. I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, but anyway, hey, I'm Ham Radio, dude. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing.